Hey folks, ready to unravel the cosmic yarn of string theory? All right, knit one, purl two. Just kidding, we're not actually knitting. But if the universe had a hobby, it might be weaving the fabric of reality with teeny tiny strings. Imagine if you can, zooming into the heart of matter, way past molecules, atoms, and even protons and neutrons, into a realm where the rules you know have left the chat. Here, the particles we thought were the endgame turn out to be energetic little string loops, buzzing and twanging like the world's smallest violins. Without the sad music, though. Now, if your brain's melting trying to picture this, remember, strings are so small they make an atom look like a giant planet. We're talking about the Planck length, that's like 10 to the minus 35 meters. Oh, but it gets wilder. These strings aren't just flopping around, they're vibrating. And just like guitar strings, the way they vibrate dictates their tune. Um, I mean particle type. So you've got this orchestra of strings, and depending on how they strum their stuff, you get different particles. The cosmic symphony that gives us all of reality. Now, let's press fast forward on that cosmic remote, and see how string theory tries to solve a pesky little family feud between general relativity and quantum mechanics. Einstein's brainchild, general relativity, is the cool grandpa of the physics family, telling stories about how mass warps space-time, giving us gravity. It's obsessed with the cosmos and the massive. Quantum mechanics is the quirky kid, super into the tiny things like atoms and subatomic particles, and it doesn't give a hoot about gravity. These two haven't been on speaking terms because their math doesn't play nice. Putting them in the same equation is like trying to mix oil and water with a sprinkle of chaos. You get a mess. String theory says, hold my beer and smooths things over by replacing point-like particles with strings, which gently weave gravity into the quantum world without causing an uproar. You can't bring up string theory without the extra dimensions, tango. No, not a dance move. We're talking about the hidden dimensions, string theory suggests. Picture a garden hose from above. It looks like a line, right? But get up close and suddenly it's got another dimension, a round. Hidden dimensions are kind of like that. According to string theory, we're bopping around in at least 10 dimensions. But like a note in a song, if you're not listening for it, you might miss it. These extra dimensions could be curled up so small, like those crazy small pop beads, that we can't see them. But they might be the VIP room where gravity and particle physics party together. So, where did these strings come from? Let's take a time-traveling DeLorean back to the Big Bang, a sort of cosmic firework show. The Big Bang wasn't just a bunch of stuff exploding into space. It was space itself getting the party started, Expansion City. Right after the Big Bang, everything was so hot and dense, our neat little string loops could have been frolicking in the cosmos, setting up the rules for how things work. As the universe cooled and stretched like taffy, strings got more space to twang in, playing their elemental tunes, and ta-da, particles, stars, and galaxies formed. If you're scratching your head, wondering if we can prove any of this stringy business, well, that's the bane of every string theorist's existence. Detecting these strings would be like trying to read fine print on the moon with your naked eye, not happening with today's tech. We're talking energies a bazillion times more than even our fanciest particle accelerators can handle. So proof remains string theory's Achilles heel, or rather, its G-string of contention. But don't fret. Theoretical predictions are a bit like laying a trail of cosmic breadcrumbs. One day, we might just stumble upon a feast of evidence that strings are the real deal. Believe it or not, string theory isn't just one theory, it's got variations. The most widely known are called type 1, type 2a, type 2b, and two kinds of heterotic string theory. Now if you're thinking this sounds like a menu at a fancy molecular gastronomy restaurant, you're not alone. Each flavor offers its own twist on how strings behave and interact. The cool part though, came in the 90s with the realization that these different theories might just be different faces of the same die. Talk about multiple personalities, right? Amidst all the theoretical loop-de-loops, we stumbled upon the crowning jewel of funky physics concepts, black holes. String theory peeked into black holes and went, hey, according to my calculations, the information that falls in doesn't get eaten up. It's actually preserved. 
That tidbit saved physicists from tearing out their hair trying to reconcile black holes' diets with the laws stating that information can't be destroyed. It's the physics equivalent of finding lost treasure. Last but not least, let's talk brains. A word that sounds like brains after a wild night out. Brains are like multi-dimensional cosmic dance floors where strings strut their stuff. Picture them as the bigger, badder cousins of strings that can have up to nine dimensions themselves. They add yet another layer of complexity to the string theory multiverse, which, let's face it, wasn't exactly craving simplicity to begin with. So, after zipping through 10 plus dimensions, unraveling strings, brains, and unsung cosmic symphonies, our journey takes a pause, but the quest for understanding the universe plays on. Remember, string theory's still a work in progress. A bit like an epic movie saga, with half the script still in the drafts folder. We're all waiting for that aha moment that might never come, or just might blow our minds. Comment to improve my training, and check out my other videos.